Dick. Hello, Hank. Um, application. Does that work? Is that a good size? Um, I was in the middle of looking through Dave's pull request from yesterday. All got connected and there was another fellow who was connected on the whereby what's his name? The rest of you know Paul. Paul, do you want to introduce yourself? I don't maybe you know everyone else here. Uh you can't dial you can dial dialing, yeah. Uh I can't hear you uh speaking to us, Paul. Oh. Showing us hey, Paul is who? Andrew Gwynn. Yep, we lost him. Hi. Oh, did I hear my name? Um, we can do there. Andrew and Thomas, did you get connected to the WebEx? I wasn't sure if there was sound coming out of it, but I was able to connect just like minor technical difficulties on my part. But the link seems to have cleared. Trying to connect back in again. I don't know if you could post that again. Okay, thank you. So let me see here if I go to How do address books work in the days of spam? Do I no longer could add everything, anybody to my address book automatically? Because it's probably spam. Or it's probably spam. Now I have no one's email address anymore. Uh, okay, um, Dave. Um, did I? Thomas has joined, and we had an Andrew Gwynn seems to be not yet connected with audio. Are we able to hear Paul this time? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Paul Rowe. Paul. Paul and Andrew, if you if you can shoot me your email address and chat, uh, actually I'd like it anyway for the notes as who is here. Um, then um, uh, I'll put you on the invite so that you will have the right link. Did you want them to introduce themselves briefly? I also would like them to introduce themselves. That would also be good, unless you you know they're well known to you and not me. That's but uh, introductions will be great. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll go ahead. This is. Uh, Paul Rowe, so I'm um, at uh, the MITRE Corporation and um, working group came on my radar. It's uh, certainly related to work we've been um, doing ourselves, and so I'm kind of interested in getting a sense of where you guys are and if and how we might eventually be able to contribute. Cool. Welcome. Thanks.
Okay, so we're using a GitHub. Uh, we have a document where this is a, a we're we're working on the document, and um, uh, feel free to jump in. Uh, and if you need the GitHub URL, that's uh, it. Um, so uh, let's just jump into anyone else have any comments about Dave's editorial pull request on. Yeah, so this uh, one. I will uh, just give an intro that uh, last time we merged pull requests, I don't know, 13 or whatever it is that's in the uh, description of this, uh, but there was still some outstanding discussion that we had during the meeting last week about things we want to change, like uh, the people uh, that collectively we didn't like the term verifying environment as being there or not, and we said claims collector was the term that Michael put in that we were going to suggest that we used. Uh, there was a up for sorry. There was a downward line from a verifier to an attester that we didn't like, um, and things like that. And so what I tried to do is I tried to just do the things that Mike would put in as the notes from last time. Um, at least uh, to the best of my knowledge, I tried to say here's what I think we discussed last week. And so every change in here is stuff that I think we actually discussed last week, but we didn't say how I was going to do it. And so I just tried to take an action item to try make an attempt to do that. Yeah, I thought that Way updated this diagram as well, but your updates are fine as well. Um, I don't see a pull request with his changes, so. I'm yeah, I didn't see any changes from him, so I just went ahead and did it, so. Yeah, uh, maybe he had them in his repo. That's maybe that's the answer. Uh, he hadn't done a pull request yet. Um, anyway, I think your changes and his changes yeah. are almost identical, so I don't think that matters much. The only thing that I didn't <clears throat> do, because I wasn't sure, Sure, how we ended on it was whether we needed to define the term composite attester or not. Um, and so right now I did not do that one because I couldn't tell that we actually had consensus to define a new term. And so I tried to leave that one with uh, with uh, William's original language and just talks about, you know, final evidence and make it be clear from the diagram. I thought it was close enough to not define the new term, but I think that's the only dis only thing that we discussed last week that came up that I did not just go ahead and do. Okay, and then you have some changes here. That, uh, Sorry, I, I said composite attester. I meant composite evidence is the what I meant to be talking about. Okay, okay. so we had a, a thread on the mailing list about the composite evidence, and and I don't really understand. Uh, Ned's not here, unfortunately, um, but Lawrence is. Um, uh, I didn't really understand whether there was objection to the concept that it would be a union of different objects or whether there was uh violent agreement and that there was just it wished someone wished to express it differently or the third possibility was that it would be an array of evidence and that one of the types of evidence would be attestation results and that there actually might be a second signature on it um well i didn't speak up on the thread but um i agree with the third one which i think was eric's point on the thread um that uh, what we did talk about last week was you just have a bunch of claim sets that are signed and whether they're actually evidence or attestation results, you might not be able to tell without looking at specific claims or even then, since we don't have the specific claims defined, what's the difference if you're just going to look at a claim set? Could you tell whether it's evidence or attestation results? We can't tell yet. And so that's why I didn't make any change to the text here. But conceptually, I agree with, uh, I think it was Eric's point that says, well, attestation results in this case are just another type of evidence. Whether even distinguishable or not, I can't tell. So that's why I didn't make any change for it. Okay. So yes, that was sorry, the exact I want to jump back. I did. did sorry, what was that, Eric? I said that was the exact point. Yes. Yeah. All right. So we seem to be in. in I don't. I'm not attached to the union concept. I I I wrote it down because I thought that's what the. I wanted to to clarify things. I'm very happy with an array of evidence, some of which happens to be attestation results, and I actually also see the point that. It may be meaningless to have an attestation result, which is not also endorsed, that may be the wrong word, uh, by the attester. Signed, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, countersigned, I guess, isn't this? In, in sure. Really, right? Um, sure. Because an example I thought of is I take a chassis, an attestation result from a chassis, uh, sorry, from a line card from a different chassis. And I present it as if it's my own. 
um, it's not quite you're not presenting it as if it's your own because it may have a different um, identifier of the uh, target environment. Uh, you, you yeah, well, get as if it's another one of the target environments that you are uh, signing or countersigning. Yes. So, so the 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 example I think that I gave in the email was uh, the verifier needs to make sure you have the correct number of wheels, and uh, you it wants to make sure that you haven't claimed someone else's wheels as your own. Perfectly valid wheels, they're just not yours. Mm -hmm. Where you're allowed to race or whatever, fly in space or whatever it is, and that that would be done with the nonce. Oh. Uh, a nonce isn't sufficient. Yeah, there's you. You need to you need to bind. You need a, a binding. Yeah, yeah. The the, the necessary but not sufficient. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You need a binding uh, between the two items, and so that that's the implication that they need right. to cross sign something, possibly that the verifier has actually challenged them with. They need right. to both respond to that nonce. Right. You could even um, have multiple, multiple nonces if you wanted to for, for or different points too. Right. So I say a nonce is not sufficient only because let's say just, I'm going to use uh, Michael's car terminology. Right. So somebody sends me a nonce. I send it over to the other car, get back the nonce from his tires, and I include that nonce in my results. Right. That doesn't give you the binding, but it still tells you that that it was signed recently, but it still wasn't signed by anything attached to my car. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah that, exactly. requires, that also requires the other car to um, um, participate in your in your yeah. uh, process. Uh, whereas it could be that the tires were on your car this morning. Yeah, I was just giving an example where I pretend that I'm a relying party uh, that wants to talk to their car, and so I get his signed nonce and I include it with mine. And so I'd say you still need something that is the binding. Yeah. So yeah. the sub mods concept in Eat, I think, handles this case just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 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 I and I don't think the goal the the goal is not of this text is not to say eat or something else is, is insufficient, but rather to say this mechanism that we put in eat is here and here's the art to solve exactly. this architectural issue. Okay. Yes, agreed. So, yeah, so the, the sub mod or whatever, conceptually what you're trying, the binding that you want in this, in this example is you want the lead attester uh, to be able to attest as far as it's, um, what do you call it? The uh, attesting environment it needs to be able to assign that this other ID of the target environment is uh, bound to the lead environment. Right. So, so submods has this, uh, the, at least the current pull request for submods has this uh, field called connection type, which huh. describes how the submod is connected to the surrounding environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I I agree that eat should have or does have the uh, uh, information sufficient to hear, and here we're just trying to motivate it generically, and then eat is the uh, uh, instantiation of the solution. Yeah. So what what eat doesn't have is a way to include claims or verified verif include verified claims and and um, uh, indicate that they were verified. Um, verified just is okay. I think it does as long as you say the verified just means signed and who's it signed by. Well, I, I'm assuming that the if you're it, if, if you're including verified claims, you're probably stripping the signature. Uh, so I think Michael said it right before. Was it is it signed or is it countersigned? In other words, is there one signature or is there two? And it could be either way, right? But having the flexibility to have one or two signatures is good. Well, if you're embedding a an eight one eight in another in another in another, then it's counter counter countersigned. Yeah, that that all that that that's all fine. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that all works just fine. You you have to you know route your nonces right, but. Uh, um, if what you're trying to do, if you're if you're if what you're trying to do is take uh, a uh, an, some attestation evidence, uh, run it through a verifier, take the output as an attestation result, and turn that back into a claim, and somehow say that the claim, that claim set into a claim set, yeah, and and somehow say that. Yeah, these claims, uh, you know, I've, I've stripped the signature from these claims, but I trust the attester. Uh, 
And here's the tester I used and the verifier I used to, you know, decide I trust these claims. We don't have, there's nothing in EAT to be able to do that at this point. Um, so I'm surprised because the, the um, trust mechanisms you describe is exactly the same as extrinsic claims. And so like GPS coordinates, it's going to be exactly the same thing. You're saying, I get it from this particular source. I trust that source. Either identify the source or I don't. It's anything. It's just these are just another example of extrinsic evidence. It's just coming from a verifier. If that's fine, you don't want to, if you don't really need to say any more, give any more details like um, the, you know, details from the signature verification, if, if you don't want to give any of that, those, those kind of details and, or who the attester was or who the verifier was, then yeah, then we're fine. But if you do want to give those details, we probably have to add something to, to eat, which. Gotcha. Uh, so I, then, think be that I guess hard. what I'm arguing for is that it should be uh, available and optional in eat because I would want to use exactly the same things for extrinsic evidence, uh, extrinsic yeah. claims. So right. I want to say where I got my GPS coordinates from, or where I got my timestamp, my, my uh, you know time of day from. Then I need exactly the same information. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. I agree with that. Can you provide us with a counterexample why that's not true? Well, so if, if I'm going to say where I got my GPS coordinates. From, I'm going to pro probably say uh, GPS module uh, made by you know the XYZ company version 6.3. Um, so let's uh, say I got from the uh, IP address lookup service where I send my IP address and it gives me back my GPS address GPS coordinates. Sure. Oh, it's a, you're you're talking about a a, a remote service? Yeah. Yeah. That's an example, right? I'm going to, if there's a GPS coordinates to include someplace, that's one of the places that I can get it, right? So what we're kind of saying is that there's not a lot of difference between a, um, a GPS device uh, connected over I squared C that can provide uh, attestations uh, to its accuracy versus one that's connected over IP. I think there's a lot of difference. Um, right now, the, the, the connection type for um, in EAT is, all about hardware and you know high proximity i think that's not sufficient because you're not getting your time of day from a hardware device unless you actually have a, a, an atomic clock on board right usually you're getting it from something like secure ntp and you have to be able to say what's your uh, time source right is it secure is it not secure did i get it from not from just regular ntp and not secure ntp then i don't really trust it as you know if you're all bets are off but here's what i think it is and even if you say you got it from gps right that's still not an atomic clock it's still a remote service rare you know a couple thousand couple hundred kilometers in the air but it's still a remote service right true and it may or may yeah. not have come secured from that satellite or whatever other source. Well, it can we know it, you know, has there's various sources and that, you know, yep. someone may do something to you. But um, <clears throat> so let, let, let's go back to the GPS example for a minute. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I believe EAT um, is only capable, just a second. To make it clear that this discussion is separate from the discussion on the uh, text on the text that we're reviewing, uh, we're kind of doing a related side discussion right now. So. Yeah. So let's let's okay. let's let's come back to the text. I think uh, is is and did anyone else get a chance to review it at this point? Do you want me to put it back on the screen? Go back here. Uh, no, um, files changed. Um, I think only the big thing to read is the the simple. The sh you shorten the text, uh, the bottom here. It looks to be correct. It it seems. I was a little bit like, well, is there words missing or concepts missing? And when it got no, there was just some duplication in, the, in meanings where it said the same thing in multiple sentences. And when I was rewriting them, I didn't see a reason to uh, duplicate stuff after it was rewritten. So yeah, I I, I gathered that. I was like, well, there was some. There's a lot less sentences. Is there something missing? And I couldn't see anything missing. So I just said, okay. All right. Are we happy with this? 
Well, I like to move on to the the discussion that we we're just having. And I'm, I'm I'm not reviewing too much in detail here, but um, one one thing I I'd, I'd like to see is that the is something like a complicated thing like uh, um, composite evidence be kind of in a subsection, something that someone would read. Uh, later on, not I don't, in the wrote, I don't think we define composite composite evidence, and I think right is that right, Dave? Because you said yeah. I, you didn't sure wasn't sure if you wanted right. we wanted to put that in. C correct. So right now, Williams' original text was something like uh, lowercase final uh, evidence because it's all in the context of the composite attester, and so he's using the layman's term lowercase final evidence as being okay. the on the line coming out the top. So I just kept it as, as what he had before. Oh, okay. Well, what I really here, let's keep what I'm really after is keep the simple use case simple, and make sure that there is a a, a simple uh, simple di diagram in the that the, the yes, reader yes. will encounter first, digest first, and then, you know, three months later when they have to think harder about it, then they can go back and read a section that's later on to find out about all this comp composite stuff. So that is the current case when uh, William did this pull request. However, the two sections that we're discussing are actually adjacent instead of, you know, three months later in the document. And so prior to this section is the simple diagram that has nothing to do with the composite uh, attester. And then it's immediately followed by the section and composite attester is where he inserted it. And so I didn't change that. I that part was merged last week. I have no problem moving the uh, the section back. I do think that there's a reason to have composite um, evidence in the in the document because we have to be able to identify different parts of evidence coming different parts for, uh, from different parts of the uh, attester because we can't make that association. We can't make any conclusions on the relying party. Um, so I will say that I'm not going to have an opinion on that point yet. Um, until after we have the discuss ha have uh, text review about the uh, layered attestation, because that will inform my opinion on whether composite evidence actually applies to that case or what. And so personally, I would want to defer any discussion of, uh, of uh, whether we use the term composite evidence until after we have text for layered evidence. Okay, this that's, is Hank. That's how come okay, I got I'm the original okay uh, action item. One of the original action names I got was, can I define layered evidence? And I had a definition inside Cisco that I was using, but it didn't match up to the one from TCG which is why I started moving and talking more about composite evidence. So the typical understanding of layering is something I'm not as interested in as composite, and I don't see them as necessarily being tightly coupled. I mean, if you'd like to give up the action item and give it back to somebody else, me or whoever else, then let us know. I would love to give away layered. Uh, I'd love to not give away uh, composite, because <laughs> I don't think they have to be bound together. What do you layering mean by in the TCG model. What's that? What do you mean by give not, away? Not, not have the owner, not, not, not have the assigned action item. If oh, you I see. You'd be happy to have someone else do it, is what you mean. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because okay. uh, my definition was different when I, when I said I think I could do layering. Now I think I'd be much better, and I, I put uh, at least a proposal in for composite evidence. Um, but I, I do think that, uh, that the two have to be decoupled. Uh, so I am willing to take the layered item, but if somebody else wants it, they're well, they're welcome to it. Um, is there anybody else that's like gung ho for writing text about uh, layering that's along the uh, TCG lines? Uh, um, this is Hank. I would like to take the item if I'm audible, which I don't know. Yes. Yep. Oh, thank you. <laughs> because I'm using a weird setup to join this call at the moment, so I'm sorry. Um, also, uh, yeah, I can take a step at it, but with a but, uh, can only deliver not next week, but uh, the week after. Um, I could probably get to it next week if you don't care either way. If you really, really want it, then I guess we could wait two weeks, but it's, you know, waiting two weeks. So. Yeah, I know. Okay, let me think about this. Let, 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 me, let me come to this back in. No, I see it now. Um, yeah, I can do next week. Okay. okay. Yeah. So is it is it layered attestation or did I miss yes, here? Layered attestation. It's because it's it's uh, very associated to the uh, yeah. type of two environments uh, thing, because the environment's roles sort of change uh, in, in uh, concatenated. 
So is I this, think it has is to this going to be another diagram. Yeah, this uh, is one where each typically each uh, target environment is an attesting is also an attesting environment for another target environment. So you have this chain of things. Okay, exactly. Okay. So these two types and the layer attestation basically co-align. I wrote the first text, so I would like to write the corresponding text here. Yep. And Hank, I'm happy to chat with you about that. The thing that reason I'm not so good is I haven't done as much as some of you guys on TCG. And one of the attesting, uh, one of the things I need is verifier uh, component evidence because in the use case I showed with the um, with the multiple components being sent, I had a, a layer where we had a chip in there, a TPM, as one set of evidence. We had the time uh, dimension, and the last dimension was the verifier also signing something. So I think that getting the two combined is good, but I certainly see that the, it can be orthogonal if, the, if you're getting something input from an external source. This is Matt. I can help, too. Okay, thanks to both of you. I think this eases it a lot. We will be able to, so I will do the pitch and, and send some uh, internal copy out and then we can do a pull request and then uh, talk about it next week. So I have a question. Uh, I don't quite understand what, what you guys are discussing at this point, but I'm happy to suspend my disbelief until I see the text explain it. So that's okay. But um, I want to know is, it, should we have a stronger connection between the combination here in 5.3 and the composite attester? Is there some relationship here because they feel similar? Is, there, is the composite attester anything more than a router? Yeah, it could be. But to Michael's point, my opinion is no. So that's the, I think that's the difference. I, I, would, I can give an example of where it does do something, and that was where you combine local measurements with verifier measurements. Verifier signed uh, results, I should say. So yes, it can do more. And that was the example I sent out in the email. Yeah, so the, the, the question is, if, if you're signing, if one attester is signing another attester's output, what is that? Well, the verifier is signing the verifier evaluation and returning it to the attester as part of the um, as part of the passport model already. So we already have verifier returned results. Uh, and then, do you append anything to that? That's the question. And I'm saying that if you're signing something in the verifier and you're adding something new, there is a task to assemble stuff and pass it to the relying party. So, Michael, the reason that I said no is because if you look at the figure on your screen right now, every attestation result is exactly the same claim set in this diagram. There's no you know, nesting or conversion of attestation result into evidence, and so that's why I said no. This is the same as this, and it's the same as this. It's just Correct. relayed. Okay. Correct. That's Correct. what this diagram is showing. And, and, that's and that is not the case. And it's not, it's not an instance of the same thing, right? The composite evidence is a different relationship, and so that's what I was trying to say. But I don't see that yep. it's different. It's just a route. In all of those cases, it's just a it's just a routing function, and and in the other diagram, it looks to be just a routing function as well. The, the other diagram I, has I, this distinction that says there's uh, evidence of attesters that may or may not become an attestation result, and then it gets included in a different set of uh, evidence of composite attester, where it may be an element of that. So it's a more complex set of, uh, of relationships. What, what are those relationships? Is it trying to say that A and B are part of the composite tester and that the lead tester attests to that? Yes. There's, there's another yep. claim here that's not explicitly pulled, called out. And to do that, it has to sign something. Yep, so agree. The, I don't know if the text is saying that. It doesn't yet. That was somebody's point about binding that we were discussing earlier on this call. That didn't come up last week, and so that's why I didn't make any changes on that because we didn't talk about it before. But yes, I agree that you need some type of a binding claim. If it's if it's not signing something, it's not an attester. Or all attesters don't have something. A, a claims collector is the thing, right? That doesn't make sense. Uh, if it's if the claims collector isn't an attester, then it's a router. And therefore it, we it is an attester, 
right now, if you look at the uh, bigger box, it's labeled lead attester A. The whole thing is the attester, the claims collector in this picture is a piece of an attester. And so it is, the whole thing is an attester. And so yes, the evidence of composite attester is signed by lead attester A. Right, whereas in the, in the, the, comp in the combination, uh, that, that's not the case. The evidence is not, is not uh, uh, countersigned. Yeah, claim. So, so the confusing point might be that the, the, the arrow starts at claims collector and not at elite attester yeah, A. That's but wrong. But it yeah. has to start at uh, claims collector. Otherwise, we don't know what the chain where the chain is ending. So there is some a little bit of a lack of um, I don't know. There's something missing here probably, and that the arrow that is evidence of composite attester simply starts at the wrong point. I assume. Right. So I think there's two possibilities. Either it starts at the wrong point, but and it has to start at something that does the signing. Or you say that the claims collector box is the thing that actually does the signing of the on the evidence of composite attester. So, so, so basically, something has to, is this arrow something has to start outside this box is what you're saying. Yeah, it, 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 it still has to be decided, and I think we have both versions here. If all the uh, attester A to whatever Z um, are just concatenated evidence in some unified structure, then the claim collector does not sign. Or is it? Yep. Again, the tester A adding its own evidence and including all the evidence of the attesters B to Z and still signs all of it, then it's not the claim collector that's emitting it. So there are both two scenarios here, and depending on that, I think the arrow is different. I would get rid of claims collector entirely. Yeah, me too. Plus one. Okay. I don't understand. Then what are the attester B arrows pointing to? Are they pointing into nothing? I think that they're pointing to a verifier, which is verifying uh, that B no. is connected to A. The discussion we had last week was we said it is not a verifying environment because we said that may or may not exist and we didn't want it in the diagram. I'm just repeating what, okay. I was, what the action item from last week was. Let me, I, think it's, I think it's the case that there is something that's, ver that's checking that A is connected to B and A is connected to C. And then... Uh, an the attesting environment is making that claim, that assertion, is asserting that claim or, uh, as part of its signature. Yep. Yes, and I agree that the current diagram can actually say that in text. So, for example, you have an attesting environment inside the lead attester, right, that collects claims from the target environment. Okay. I'm just going to point to the, to the picture here, right? So, if one of the claims is collected from the target environments inside the lead attester, is a claim that says I am bound that target environment in lead attester A is bound to a tester B, and here's the idea of a tester B. If that's one of the claims that comes back, this picture is already accurate. It's describing the claims collector as a target environment? No, the claims collector is the thing that combines the pieces of evidence from different places and puts them in the verifier. But the binding in this exa in my example is one of the claims collected from the target environment on the left side. Well, all an attester does is collect claims and sign them. So if you if you say that, then what does the attesting environment even do? The attesting environment certainly signs any of the claims from the target environment. Absolutely. Whether the, the attesting environment signs a, claims it's, from a tester B or C, or there's a different signer that's inside the claims collector, are two ways to implement it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the way we've written it is the attesting environment collects and signs. I'm confused by this collecting claims arrow. That was there last week. Yeah, that doesn't mean that was right. But um, testing environment collecting claims into the target environment. Yeah, so that was the, the collecting claims was what formerly a couple of weeks ago was something about measuring. Uh, where the testing environment measures the target environment, and we decided that we didn't like the term measuring, and we were going to use the term collecting claims instead. Yeah, so that's collecting claims on the target environment. The attesting environment is collecting claims on the target environment, providing evidence of the lead attester into the claims collector. And maybe it needs to be a claims concentrator. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the right, right word is. But I would, I, would, I would reverse the arrows. The, the, the claims go from the target environment to the attesting environment. The tester B feeds into yeah. the testing environment, a tester C feeds into the uh, testing environment, and the output of the testing environment goes to the verifier. So the claims collector is gone. 
I would be okay with that. And the, the collecting claim zero, I thought about reversing the direction of that, but left it the same way as uh, William had it since we didn't talk about it. But that what you described would, would be acceptable to me. So the job of the intesting environment is to collect the claims and knowing, knowing where they've come from and that they've come from a reasonable place, a trustworthy place of some sort, and then to sign them producing attestation evidence. So what you're describing tr ends up treating a tester B as if it was another target environment in that picture. And yeah. I'm okay with that. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. And if we do that, if we can you, probably get rid of the term claims collector as well. We can get rid of claims correct collector that we said. As a term, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's pretty close to layering at that point. Uh, yeah, you'll see one of the diagram simplifications that I did is uh, on the left side, I have the parentheses S in there where uh, William had multiple boxes, just like a tester B, a tester C, dot, dot, dot on the right, had the same thing on the left. And I that's not the main point of this. The main point of this is the right side. And so I collapsed those into parentheses S just to simplify the diagram and put the uh, viewers' uh, attention on the right side of the diagram. Nobody seemed to have a problem with that, but but that's another. So if so, you want to assign that to me, I'm happy to do what we just talked about. I didn't hear anybody arguing against it. So um, well, let me the, just put the comments again. No, just what we're talking about is uh, reversing the direction of the arrow, which is what uh, Michael is showing on the screen right now. And then uh, replacing claims collector would be a tester C and B lines coming into the attesting environment. And the line going out so the of the attesting environment the whole, yes. goes yeah. all the way out. Right. And then updating the text to not use the term claims collector. Okay. So, so just to be clear here, uh, come on. Yes, what you're showing on the screen matches one of yes. the pieces. Yes. So, but you want the, uh, the box. Let me just see if I can get this on the screen here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I could show you my editor if you prefer. <laughs> um, might actually be better. What you're uh, trying to do real time? Yeah. So so yeah. yeah. So I'm just trying to get this to this is my editor. But there we go. Okay. <laughs> so um, well, let me just show the editor because I don't know where the go something here has goes. Uh, oh, no, my video. No, I don't want to turn my video on. I want to. Does that work? Can you see it in nice orange on black? Mm -hmm. Yes. Amber, good old amber monitor. Okay, so where does this arrow here go? Uh, the bit higher. It's the same line as the evidence of composite or tester line that comes off the top. It's the same line. Okay. Because you no longer have evidence of lead tester that has a line. That label goes away because it's only evidence of composite or tester that comes out. For this diagram, anyway. Um, so, like this? I think that was the suggestion. Mm hmm. And you can delete the label on the bottom where it says evidence of lead tester. So I feel that we've lost something by removing the claims collector here. Uh, you're not done yet because the arrows that come leftward out of a tester B, C, and dot, dot, dot need to go to a testing environment. Well, they need to go to this box now. Yes, yes, they do not come to and so the. The attesting environment is the claims collector. All we did was we merged those two boxes. Oh, I see. Okay, so, um, all right, I see. So I'd move them to the outer box. Yeah, that's why it needs a bunch more ASCII art because you gotta move move a testing environment around to make them fit and so on, yeah, so. You didn't tell me that part. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. pretty good. Huh? He's pretty uh, good. 
<laughs> yeah, it's going to require moving. Just like I had to move a bunch of boxes around to make them fit and be intelligible. There will be some more uh, moving around to make all the lines and labels and stuff fit here. So, so, so Emacs has has a mode which lets you type in other directions, uh -huh. which makes it much easier to do because you can, uh -huh. you can, you know, as you type, it goes to the uh, direction you want. Uh -huh. So, so you want this gone as well then. Uh -huh. Um. And then this arrow has to go yep. like that again. And then how does this arrow connect? Just down to around the bottom? Yep. yep. Sure. Yeah. Um, now, since See, what seeing this is worth here, the Sorry, I was saying seeing this is worth the price of admission for the call today. Uh, okay. Um, so right. since so, uh, what you mentioned here, I will point out um, one thing that might be getting lost here, which I am okay with. Okay, um, and that is uh, in order to make the picture now make sense, we, it still makes sense as is. Um, what this is showing now is different from what William had originally, and that is if you look at the left side, it says target environments potentially plural. Yeah. So this is showing a picture where there is one a testing environment singular uh, measuring or collecting claims from multiple target environments plural. What he had before was multiple a testing environments, each collecting from a single target environment. And so what we're losing is the fact that we're saying in this example, because we're just showing an example here, uh, just like a tester BC and dot, dot, dot is an example, right? If there's only one a testing environment and a bunch of targets. That's different from what William originally had, where you could have multiple testing environments. But I like the picture as it is. I think it's simple, and it's because the point is true express relations. Is, is part of your point that this hat should have a plural? No. What I'm saying is that uh, once you have plural, then a claims collector was just one of the testing environments, and we're saying no, you wanted to combine those, and so that's the difference in, in the change that we just made. As we're saying, all the tester B, C, and dot 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 are are uh, done by the same. Uh, thing that does the signature over the composite evidence, which might include individual things that are individually signed by other things. And so here, if you only have one attesting environment, then you don't have sort of nested signatures per se. You just have one flat signature over a bunch of target environments. So it's a different picture. I don't know if that made any sense. I mean, nesting, we do show nesting here. So that's okay, because you have a tester B and C feeding into the, the uh, into A. Um, uh, okay, I, fair enough. That's fair enough. You don't have nesting on the left side, but you're you're right. You do have it on the right side. Yeah. And that, that's yeah. kind of by implication where a tester B could be in an instance of a of a tester A. You know, kind of have that, that detail. Yeah. I, like, I I am fine with this because I think it illustrates because the main point is to illustrate the right side. Yeah. Um. What I I, I was just curious. I mean, is there some reason you would have multiple attesting environments for the same target? That seems like a, no. kind of crazy and wild and, and you know, re redundant space shuttle, shuttle a, a testers or something. Now, what William had before was inside the LIDA tester, he had multiple targets and multiple testing environments with a one-to-one -one between them. Okay. That was his original picture. Yeah, and yeah. I was trying to, I was trying to understand. In the because I didn't think that was the main point of the diagram that we're trying to expose. Yeah. Just like we're not showing the blow up inside of tester B either, right? There's so right, right, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that that uh, we should go do all that. I'm just, was, I was just trying to understand what the motivation might have been for that. Um, yeah. We don't have to draw an architecture diagram for every possible configuration. I mean, that's exactly. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am fine with the diagram as you have it, Michael. The text needs to be updated to match, but the, as far as the diagram, I agree that this is what we were just saying. Yeah, me too. Okay, I'm just concerned that um, we're going to change our mind again next week. You mean when William said the call? <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was also saying the same thing. I'm not super sure if I'm okay with ending it at the environment box. But I have to think about this until next week. So yes, maybe I will have another opinion next week.
is it still evidence of composite attester a thing or is it just in evidence um i think it's still correct as is because the big box on the bottom is still labeled composite attester so what we're if we were to look if we're trying to imagine what the evidence looks like it's there's a there's a set of claims that are for the target environment there's a, a uh, multiple sets of signed claims from the attester BC and et cetera. There's an additional claim that says that that the attesting environment is uh, is assembling the the, um, the signed claims from these other environments into a composite evidence structure. So there's a there's a there's a an additional claim that's added to the claim set that says I'm doing the assembling. Is that everybody's agreement? Uh, everybody's understanding? That's an example of how it could be done. Yes. There's and more, there's more than one way to do it, but yeah. There's more than one okay. way to do it, but I agree that way would be a way to do it. Okay. And so the signature over all of that information. There's one signature over all of that information into a, a structure, which is, I guess, a sub uh, sub mod structure or something like that. For example, yes. Michael, you're muted. Um, yeah, I was just typing to okay. try to fix the text. Um, is there another topic that someone would like to jump on to? Um, what's the next step on the other one, the Ant Strawman text about freshness uh, pull request that we discussed uh, last time? Um, I did a minor change, and I didn't know if we wanted to merge this one and assign somebody else an action item for the next step. Um, the feedback that we talked about last time, other than, gosh, it would be nice to add, you know, the following topic or whatever, was we wanted the title changed back to freshness, which I did, and we wanted the security consideration section to talk about replay protection. And all I did was I added a, a one sentence that uh, mentioned replay protection could be done using freshness as discussion in another section. And so those are the only changes that I did. I wasn't sure what to do in response to all the other things. And so I'm wondering if somebody else wants to take the next action item. And if we, uh, I would propose that we merge, unless there's any new objections to the text that's in here, and then uh, do any changes as another pull request. Um, I could be okay with that. I wanted to have the conversation about how a freshness nonce is handled in in a composite attester scenario or do we want to wait until we get layering uh, as well to have that conversation i think it's more important Maybe. to capture what we think is right for the moment and we can have a uh, this deep discussion on layer next time and then revisit this if it doesn't match but i would agree with dave that we can pull this in for now because it's an improvement in any wow in any case and sorry, I'm driving. And um, so this is, uh, I think, a good idea. And we have stable uh, advancement on the text that is visible. Not everybody is looking at any branch, every branch. So. I'm OK with the text. You want me to pull to merge this? That is my proposal. Since I did the things that people had problems with, and other things were just, oh, we should cover X or Y too. And I didn't do the cover X or Y too. I didn't know what to say there. But as far as the things that people had problems with, I fixed those. So um, I would propose you go ahead and merge it now. And uh, anything else, people are welcome to submit new requests for. 
Yeah, I, I'm fine with uh, merging. So I, I, I would like uh, have a, like a like a remote WebEx pre, uh, review and yes. <laughs> Thank you, Hank. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so um, I think I have. So I have another uh, comment on the diagram. Going back. Okay. Um, you want me to put the diagram up? Yeah, if you just, it was there a second ago. The composite diagram. Um, the uh, parenthetical via internal links or network connections. Yeah. Um, I don't think that network connections belongs there. Um, this may be a longer discussion than we have for for today, but and it's the discussion we were starting with the GPS and the time thing, but. Um, uh, I don't think network connection belongs there. How, how do we either tell the difference? There? Is it important to show well, either of them? I, I think we have to ask how how uh, the, the testing environment can tell the difference. Um, I guess the label is, now is, is ambiguous. It, is it internal? parentheses, links or network connections, or is it internal links or network connections? Well, you, I, to me, a link and a network connection are uh, basically synonyms. And if they're yeah. both internal, then just dropping it would have no change in meaning, right? So if it depends on how the hardware characteristic of, of the, the, the connection. So this is, this is in a sub mod, this is connection type. Um, it seems to me there are, you kind of falls into two categories. There, there is a connection that's really based on hardware, like these guys are on the same bus or they are running on the same processor and they're just different processes or something like that. And in a situation where the testing environment can know something about the, the, the source um, and it can know it from either it's, the, the hardware or the system software that it's it's running, um, and those are the only things that the uh, a testing environment can know about. Um, if, you, if, let me finish. If if it's coming from a network, then it's it's or uh, even a USB connection or or uh, an RF connection or Ethernet or anything like that. It's going to have to go to some process or some entity on the local machine, which is going to uh, be the thing that actually talks to the attester. So I think that the even if it, even if it some even if the evidence arrives over say a local bus, the USB, it doesn't there's nothing there's nothing uh, to prevent the the attesting and the, the other attester from being network connected and obtaining evidence over that network connection. And so it's actually misleading to the verifier if if um, we if the architecture assumes too much, much about how that evidence was put together. And so it's uh, almost so, I'm not sure what value is being at the end of the day. What value does this bring to the verifier, knowing that it arrived over a bus, if it can't conclude that it didn't come over a network, but it couldn't. It can't conclude that actually. So, what's the value? So, you can give an example. Not an example of a bus in this case. I have I a, give another I have example. A, a NIC connected to a USB stick and for USB port, and we we still don't know if the evidence didn't come over a network from a if the if the originating uh, environment wasn't actually network connected. We don't know that. The attester the attester can talk to the USB driver. And if it trust, trusts the USB driver, um, in a, then it can say some things about the, you know, what is coming over USB. But the testing environment only can, only can uh, trust the USB driver. And when I talk about bus, I'm not talking about a pluggable bus. I'm talking about a bus that's like internal to a CPU or internal to a, a um, circuit board card or something like that that's not pluggable. And that, that's why this connection type is really kind of important because you need to understand 
the, the characteristics of that connection, you know, how easy is it to attack that connection or, or spoof that connection? So USB is kind of easy uh, to, to spoof. Uh, IP connections are e very easy to spoof. You don't know what you're, what's on the other end unless you've got some sort of a signing, uh, cryptographically signed system. So what you really have to be doing is thinking about talking to uh, things that the attesting, uh, attesting environment can really understand. Um, and know something about. So there, there got to be processes on the same CPU or hardware that's that is connected in a way that the end user can't manipulate the hardware. So USB is equivalent to an IP connection. Yeah. So this is Hank. Um, I think this is an oversimplification. Maybe it might be dangerous to assume that we can infer somehow the level of assurance of an interconnect here. Um, so I, I'm not sure if we want to have that assumption. Uh, isn't that why the evidence you can't live without it? Isn't that so why the evidence it. from the attesters B and C is signed? Yeah. So why do I care well, if it's but, an but from the attester? You can also worry about what's coming, where it's coming from. Like self-driving cars, uh, you might have evidence coming in from their internal network, which might have certain assumptions about it that better be coming in from that particular bus. So I think that the assertion that that there's something implicit about the a, a, a tester's connection, even if it's signed or not signed, does matter to the attesting environment. And it isn't being generated by the attester, it's relevant to the connection. Different connection types can have different trust profiles with them. The, the point is, is that the evidence from B and C could, could come from a remote node, but all that's being asserted is, is that, that that evidence arrived over a local uh, connection, but, but it Agreed. doesn't really know yeah. that, it, that the evidence arrived locally. So the, this, the term of local and remote is confusing. Yeah. Exactly. I would uh, plus one the line of thought. Say, say again. This is one of the things that hits layering too. This is one of the reasons I, I kind of jumped back from layering because this is exactly a layering question. Exactly. Thank you, Eric, for putting the more words out of my mouth. Vice versa, I don't know. <laughs> Layering is sort of looking at this from a, the, a completely other perspective, which is starting with the like the attester B as the starting point and going the other direction, then compositing. Compositing is sort of drilled down, and layering is drill up. And that's why we have to figure out the, the inner integration, and that's why I kind of step back and hopefully we can take another attack at it with this view. Yeah. But yeah, I'm for using different terminology and different diagram for layering than for compositing and not trying to combine them. Yep. That may seems to make sense to me. Uh, also, again, it, it, I, was, I was inspired by this, this conundrum by the uh, uh, arrows that are now ending at the uh, attesting environment box in the composite um, attestation device. Um, so that was confusing to me. And, and, and now you can see why, because this is the, you, you cannot see the origin anymore. It's, it's just clear and it depends how you, how you track it and uh, what assertion you can make about the interconnect. I'm not sure if there's, the attesting environment. I, I'm not. I don't understand that what you're talking about layering yet. Um, but the. I think the attesting environment has to be able to evaluate how its evidence is coming in. It has to understand something about how its evidence is coming in, and including um, attestations from attestation evidence or output of other attesters. So it, it has to understand that. That's just part of what an yeah, testing environment has to do. It, 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 certainly there's a set of claims can be asserted about, about the, the connectivity of the different other uh, evidence and how it arrives, but it, it can't project onto that evidence too much unless it becomes yeah, a verifier. Yeah, yeah I, I agree.
Are we going all, do we have an hour and a half today or is this is it an hour? The invite is uh, only an hour. Okay. We're already past the time of the invite. Yeah, I think I have to jump to another call. I should at least, but this is typically more important. <laughs> so it's fine. Yeah. And sorry for being so unprepared this week. I was like literally all the time bound by, by a stupid offloaded project that uh, I have to deal with. So next week, that's why I was not a little bit careful on, on promising next week, but I think I can do the layered thing with help and this is the case. And thank you for the time on my side, at least. Thank you. Uh, I emerged. Dave just had a fix for some for a small thing. Um, I opened an issue, as you saw, on this internal links question, which we just discussed, and I didn't hear a clear resolution to it. So I think we'll have to pick that up yeah, next I time. I agree. Um, um, I fixed some white space, trailing white space issues, and I fixed the text here. So I appreciate if someone could go through this text here. Uh, and say whether I got the right word. In particular, I think the word... Uh, uh, word line need... 202 still has the term claims collector in line 202 that needs to fix. Okay, there you go. I'll fix that. But I term I, I think may be controversial is the lead attesting environment may be... Uh, I agree that that may be controversial because I don't know if William would agree with that, but we'll see. So I don't know about that, that one. That's where I would like to know. Um, he said he'll be on the call next week, okay. um, so um, they're back on Friday. Um, so let's leave this for next week, unless you have some strong opinions right now. Please put them in, and I'll talk to you next week. I'm proposing that. Uh, so let me see. So next week, uh, next week we have a, a, our meeting at the North regular time, and then we have. Uh, a RATS virtual interim committee of the whole the following day at the same time, if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to be the Lawrence show. Is that true? Am I completely wrong? Uh, I mean, I think, well, <laughs> as far as I understand it at this point, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got all the agenda items. It's your show. I, I mean, I just asked for some time and they gave it to me. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> uh, so uh, there's five minutes to talk about use cases. Yeah. Okay. All and right. I, I probably won't attend next week uh, uh, for this meeting because uh, it's it's conflicting with Fido. Oh, so all right. for the so rats, I uh, wanted to ask if we should cancel it. That's what I wanted to ask actually. Oh, I'm for the following uh, day, but well, I was going to ask if the rats virtual interim on the Wednesday. Is there anything that we want to say about the architecture documents? In other words, do we need a slide to give the status or something or not? Probably. <clears throat> so I would propose that we post a version after next week's call. Yeah, because if somebody, if we do hunt and have a slide about the status or something, then we may still want to meet next week to just talk about that slide. So this is I thanks agree with to you on, apparently. So, but I, I do not do it, agree exactly. So typically the best thing to do is to submit before and then talk about it, or to read it and then talk about it. So we have a slide and then want to submit afterwards. So I don't see, really see the gain. What do we gain by that? By submitting or by having a slide? Yeah, by, by, by submitting directly after we talked about it like three minutes with a single slide. I mean, you could submit it, I think, after Tuesday's meeting, and then people might have a look at it just beforehand, and and that, that's even more productive, I think, than than submitting afterwards. That's what uh, I suggested. I wanted to submit oh, on Tuesday sorry. before the the virtual interim, as a result oh, of whatever we can con we consent we uh, whatever consensus we get next week, we'll submit it as a as a miles as a as a point in time. Have a slide to summarize what we're talking about. And there, and maybe we'll agree to 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 close this pull request, and maybe we'll have decided on the this this issue twenty four. Is, yeah, is there a... the meeting to be the red arc meeting than the interim? Sorry, I didn't I didn't really get that. Yeah, dense. <laughs> is there 
value in doing that if there's no discussion at the virtual interim? Typically, it is. Everything is basically CFC. Oh, tomorrow is the red meeting, and some people might read the architecture beforehand, just because. I'm just. Is there an agenda item uh, to to talk about architecture? So no, would be a change to the current agenda. It would be a set would have to be bashed in because we are late. Yeah. That's why I wasn't assuming more than one slide, but uh, often, you know, the chairs or somebody will have a, a document or milestone review. Uh, if you just submit one slide, often they'll stick that in. Ed, okay. You want to? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got five minutes. There's five minutes at the beginning and five minutes at the end, basically. But the uh, end, then five minutes is focusing on the use cases, just positioning. The five minutes at the beginning potentially could be used to update the status of the other of the architecture draft. So it's we, it's possible to squeeze it in. Okay, thanks Ned. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, so shall we uh, end now and resume next week? Yep. Yep. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. All right. Thank you for all. And welcome to all the new people. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.